Happy Rosh Hashanah and a sweet new year to you. In our last video, I talked about my receiving the gift of tongue along with the reading of Isaiah 59 where it said, As for me, this is my covenant with them, says Yahweh. My spirit who is on you and my words that I have put in your mouth will not depart from your mouth or from the mouths of children or from the mouths of the descendants from this time on and forever, says the Lord. And if you've been watching, we talked about heaven and that when I was shown this place and when I was there, it was all about praise. And it's also in praise that I got the gift of tongue. Because I was saying, I love you, God. I love you. And that came out. It's my heart singing to God, loving Him, appreciating Him for everything that He has done, for everything that He is, for everything that even I don't understand about Him. It is a pure form of appreciation. And then I love you that resounds again and again and again until forever. And this is the holy tongue that was given to me. If you notice, it's hallelujah, which I didn't know. It is glory to my El, to my God. It is an I love you that is forever. And now, why me? Because I am Zion, the if you believe in Jesus, that means that the spirit of the faithful has been reincarnated into my life. The one who has come from heaven has returned to earth and will return to heaven after. But if you don't believe in Jesus, this word stands as a Jewish testament to the truth of Zion and the promise that he made about his chosen one. And this is my reading today for the new year. It says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth. Oh, now it's turning dark. I have been filming since it was light. And thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look about you. All assemble and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters are carried in their arms. Now, today, my reading was also this. Isaiah 56, which is an inv invitation, not just to the house of Israel, but to the entire world. And let me read it. Isaiah 56. This is what Yahweh says. Maintain justice and do what is right, for my salvation is close at hand, and my righteousness will soon be revealed. Blessed is the man who does this, the man who holds it fast, who keeps the Shabbat without desecrating it, and keeps his hand from doing any evil. Let no foreigner... Now, okay, for me, I am still perfecting Shabbat as we speak. I fail and I say sorry and I try so hard to follow the small rules because these small rules are also an exigent of how important you believe God's word is. And, and his word and his rules are an exigent of how much you actually love God. And if you love God, you can follow a small rule. And from small small rules, it's easier for you to follow the big rules, the moral rules. And this is why it is a strengthening. Um, I believe Sean Covey and Stephen Covey refer to it as um, deposits in your personal bank account. When you do the right thing, you feel good about yourself. And these laws are just exactly that little deposits in order for you to feel stronger to do the right thing to say no to bribery and corruption and to have the strength of righteousness with you but right now it's an invitation for all peoples and this is important because a lot of times the jewish um, religion um, they're very close 
that this is only for the people of Israel. That's true. There is scripture that the law was given to the people of Israel and no one else in this world. But also, this scripture in particular will point to the fact that God is also welcoming to foreigners and other people and even those that he had previously excluded to the temple. But let me read it to you. Let no foreigner say, who has bound himself to the Lord, say, The Lord will surely exclude me from his people. Now, when you bind yourself to the Lord, it doesn't mean just any foreigner can um, be a part of it or enter, but rather the foreigner must be bound to the Lord in order for him to be acceptable. And that means following the laws and the mitzvot and the Torah of God and devoting himself to body mind and soul to the service of the lord and and he says and let not any eunuch complain i am only a dry tree because here god is a god of life and if any eunuch would even a eunuch could be given a child by god that is the power of the lord um and also eunuchs were not allowed to come into the presence of the lord but this can be changed here for this is what Yahweh says to the eunuchs who keep my Shabbat who choose what pleases me and hold fast to my covenant to them I will give within my temple and its walls a memorial and a name better than sons and daughters I will give them an everlasting name that will not be cut off now this is a promise specific to the the eunuch it could be a chosen one as well but in general just for the public um, basically you must choose what pleases the lord not what displeases them and the covenant of the lord are many and different so the covenant of the lord to the israelites is different but the covenant of the lord to all peoples is simple to do what is right right to love faithfulness and righteousness to walk humbly with the lord your god right and so and to do the right thing basically right but there's also the ten commandments which was given to all people so it's different for each person but it's personal and for you what do you think what covenant have you made with god that you need to keep right that's also a personal thing this is what he will give a, a name greater than sons and daughters because in Israel, in Israel, it all is dependent on which house of Israel you're from and the bloodlines are traced back. But what God is saying is, even if you are a eunuch, you can belong to the house of God. And in general, okay, in general, even those that were cast aside as unworthy and unholy could come to the Lord with devotion, sacrifice, and faithfulness. So, keeping your covenants is a sign of your devotion and your sacrifice and your true love for God. And with that, you may be accepted into the presence of the Lord. Now, it's, it continues. I will give... Um, and foreigners who bind themselves to the Lord to serve Him, to love the name of the Lord and to worship Him, all who keep Shabbat without desecrating it, and who hold fast to my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and give them joy in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be acceptable in my altar, for my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. The Sovereign Lord de declares, He who gathers the exiles of Israel, I will gather still others to them besides those already gathered. So this is actually the call for the Gentiles because... Um, it's a it's a universal call. However, it comes with a universal um, responsibility of keeping the covenants and, of course, keeping Shabbats in particular. Why Shabbats are mentioned in particular? It's because it talks of the absolute certainty of God's creation of the world in seven days, and this commemorates his glory and how we reverence him on the seventh day okay so basically it's it's his day that we have to keep okay okay so 
this is also the warning for the wicked. Now, the wicked I described previously, but this is another version of the wicked. And he says, Come all you beasts of the field, devour all beasts of the forest. Israel's watchmen are blind. They, are, they lack knowledge. They are mute dogs. They cannot bark. They lie around and dream. They love to sleep. They are dogs with mighty appetites. They never have enough. They are shepherds who lack understanding. They all turn their own way. Each seek his own gain or pleasure. Come, each one cries. Let's get wine. Let's get drink. And get our fill of beer. And tomorrow will be like today or even better. So in this scenario, God is talking about pleasure seekers. And he describes them as dogs. Because they don't have any consciousness of tomorrow, of their soul. And this is what we must strive against. We have to strive against that short-sightedness. Because as I said, I've seen heaven. And it's such a waste if no one gets to be there. There's only a few people who may be worthy for it. And this is... Um, this is the sad truth because um, holiness is a hard not hard but like it's a work of the spirit and it's a work of putting your flesh under control and command of your spirit and very few people are able to do that consciously and that's why I pray that if you're watching this, that you would be one of the people who will live a successful life. A life that is worthy of heaven. That is worthy of the Shamayim to come. And it says, The righteous perish and no one ponders it in his heart. Devout men are taken away, and no one understands that the righteous are taken away. So here, a lot of times when people die, like when my mom died, this was one of the readings. The righteous are taken away. And sometimes, um, death is not um, a disaster. Even if you're young, even if you're, even if no one remembers you. But what is important is that your soul was righteous. And if that soul, God, Yahweh, Aya, Anna, guarantees your way to heaven. And these are the people who are taken away here. Those who walk uprightly enter into peace. Shalom. And a lot of, a lot of heaven could be described as shalom. It's a great peace. Those who enter uprightly enter into peace. They find rest as they lie in death. But here is the warning against the wicked. You come here, son of sorcerers, offsprings of adulterers and prostitutes. Whom are you mocking and at whom do you sneer and stick out your tongue? Are you not a brood of rebels, the offspring of liars? You burn with lust among oaks and under every spreading tree. And sacrifice your children in the ravines under the overhanging crags. The idols among the smooth stones in the ravines are your portion. They are your lot. They only. Yes, to them you have poured out drink offerings and offered grain offerings. In light of these things, should I relent? You have made your bed on high and lofty hill and went and offered yourself as a sacrifice. Behind your doors and doorposts you have... Put your pagan symbols, forsaking me, you uncovered your bed and climbed into it and opened wide and made a pact with those whose beds you love. And you looked on in their nakedness. You went to Molech with olive oil and increased your perfumes. You sent ambassadors away. So this is a scary thing for me. I pray that if ever I would come to be as confused as this that I would have a way to come back to God and this is what redemption is all about because um, a lot of these um, okay here it says is it not because I have been long silent that you do not fear me 
I will expose your righteousness and your works, and they will not benefit you. When you cry for help, let those collection of idols save you. The wind will carry all of them off. A mere breath will blow them away. But the man who makes me his refuge will inherit the land and possess my holy mountain. So, here's the truth of this, okay? Um, there is a lot of sin in this world. And that's why I'm saying that not a lot of people will come into heaven. But as long as there is life, there is the possibility for repentance and restitution. And I cannot stress enough the restitution. Because a lot of people say, just believe and confess and then you will be forgiven. Even if you are forgiven by God, you have a duty for restitution in the world. If your sin was physical, your restitution must be physical. If your sin was verbal, your restitution must be also verbal. It is a returning into the path. As I discussed earlier, those in my other parts of this video, we have a duty to straighten the crooked paths. And that, that is the duty of the sinner. Okay, so, or more likely the repentant, right? So, and if you're watching this, I pray that not only will your heart and conscience be called into contrition and confession, but rather that your Holy Spirit, the one that is residing within you, would strengthen you for full restitution so that you may be the light in dark places instead of the burden on people. And then God, who has already forgiven you, may count you as righteous and may bless you full to the full. Amen.